This is an area which is very clearly defined that a province has the right to offer pensions. We have a framework for how we would be able to set up our own pension, and we've got a formula for how uh, we would be able to do the transfer of assets. So this is just a very factual report so that we can give it to Albertans, and they'll give us feedback on whether they want to proceed. If uh, they give the indication to the panel that they want a referendum, that's what we'll do. I find the idea of an Alberta pension plan an intriguing opportunity for Albertans. And I know a decision on a public policy issue of this magnitude should only be made after plenty of rinsing and soaking and discussion and debate among Albertans. Most big ideas deserve at least that. The job of our panel is straightforward. We ask Albertans to read the report, look at the facts, participate in the discussions, and then tell us what they think, what individual Albertans think about the Alberta Pension Plan and the options that we will consider. Over time, uh, there was a divergence from the other provinces in the early to mid 80s, and by 1997, it showed that we were uh, entitled to 49% of that asset pool. So it uh, stands to reason that that number has, has held uh, as more investment income has, has come into play. This is the reason why Albertans have been frustrated, why the Fair Deal panel was created in the first place, why there was an equalization referendum that got 62% support, is that we want to have a better constructive relationship with the, the rest of the country, and this begins the conversation. The vast majority of Albertans have said repeatedly that they don't want their pension a fund their retirement security to be used as a political tool in an unending uh, political game uh, uh, between uh, this government and, and Ottawa. But if you're going to go down this path, you need to give people accurate information. It is true that, that uh, provinces with slightly younger populations and, and more employment uh, will contribute more. When somebody uh, works for 20 or 30 years in Alberta and then moves to BC to retire, that ends up uh, showing up in this analysis as Alberta put all the money in and BC took it all out. The reality is, is that um, there's a lot of misinformation uh, in this report. The report released today by the Alberta government claims that about 53% of CPP assets would be given to a separate Alberta plan. And that's just a fairly unreasonable number and I think a problematic interpretation of the act itself. And so that struck me because when you have a very large initial endowment in a pension plan, then you have a much, much lower contribution rate than you would otherwise have with a more reasonable interpretation that I think is around 20% of CPP assets, then the contribution rate is much higher than what they show in the report. So it all comes down to that asset split, but unfortunately the language in the act is fairly vague. It's not obvious what it means, and ultimately there's going to be a multi-year long Supreme Court of Canada fight over what that act actually means. So I'll be paying attention to whether the conversation is focused on other issues. You know, like we saw in the equalization referendum, it was really just a proxy fight for other concerns around pipelines, environmental policy, and, and other issues. But with this idea of a separate Alberta pension plan, there are benefits. We are a younger population, and it's hard to avoid a potential reduction in our contribution rate. But then the question will be, is that benefit worth the risks involved? Future demographics not working out in our favor, migration flows not working out in our favor, and a smaller separate plan is more exposed to risk. So do the benefits outweigh the costs? If it's a fulsome conversation that Albertans have, like an open and transparent conversation on those grounds, that'll be really productive to see. Uh, if it's just a proxy fight for other political battles that people want to wage, that'd be unfortunate.